I know there's been a lot of celebratory lists about the fact that we are in the midst of completing an entire decade, but what about 2019? Because despite generally being a pretty dark year for this world, LGBTQ excellence shine its way through anyway. One of the most revolutionary depictions of sexuality on any screen in 2019 came from an MTV reality dating show. Seriously, Ari The One was wildly insightful in terms of how it depicts what it's like for queer folks to try and find love. Olivia Wilde's hilarious high school buddy comedy both feminizes and queers the teen raunch genre in a way no film released in multiplexes ever has. One of my favorite additions to the CBC family this year has to be the LGBTQ-themed podcast Chosen Family. If you're not listening to it, you're missing out. There's few things that resonated with me as much this year as one specific scene from the Tales of the City reboot. If you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. 11 openly LGBTQ folks were nominated for acting Emmys this year, and four of them won, including Pose's Billy Porter, who became the first openly gay black man to win a Best Actor prize. Obviously, all hail Fleabag for a million reasons, but let's not forget that it made gay actor Andrew Scott the world's most lusted after man thanks to his perfectly sexy portrayal of Hot Priest. Poet Gwen Banawe's gorgeous collection of work, Holy Wild, won a Governor General's Literary Award for poetry, making her the first trans woman to ever do so. One of the best movies of the year, Celine Sciamma's Portrait of a Lady on Fire gave us an instantly iconic on-screen romance in 18th century lovers Eloise and Marianne. The hottest thing on Broadway right now is sitting down for a seven-hour play about gay trauma, where by the end, you and every other person in the theater will be sobbing. It will only cost you a trip to New York and $300 US, but think of what you'll save on therapy. Jonathan Van Ness continued to prove why he is an international treasure when he came out this year as HIV positive, helping reduce what remains a significant stigma for millions of people. Who had a better 21st year than King Princess? They released a claim debut album, Cheat Queen, and played Lollapalooza, Coachella, Glastonbury, and SNL. His single, Old Town Road, was undeniably the song of the year, spending a record-breaking 19 weeks on top of the Billboard 100. In the midst of all this, he proudly came out, the first artist to ever do that while having a number one single. If you don't know what must get rid of toxic in community refers to, please find your way to the SNL sketch Sarah Lee and bow down to the comedic genius of Bowen Yang and Harry Styles. Eggplant emoji, eggplant emoji, eggplant emoji, raindrop emoji, train emoji, ghost emoji. 2019 marked the 50th anniversary of a huge year in the history of LGBTQ rights, 1969. And we celebrated that here at CBC Arts with a project called Super Queeros. I know this is a cheat, but 2019 saw three different artists explode onto the scene, and if you don't know their names or their work, I suggest you change that. Orville Peck, Ocean Vuong, and Jeremy O'Harris. Every episode of the second season of Pose was an hour of education, perspective, heart and soul, giving us a powerful window into black, queer, and trans experiences. Canada finally got to represent on RuPaul's Drag Race this year, as our queen Brooklyn Heights fiercely competed her way to a second place finish. One of the best surprises of 2019 was that this Elton John biopic not only didn't suck, but it was a very gay and very jubilant delight. Ryan O'Connell's series is a very charming look at a gay man with cerebral palsy, discovering himself and his sexuality. Our favorite twin sisters blessed us twice in 2019 by revisiting their roots in both a memoir and an open-hearted album that re-recorded songs they initially wrote as teens. Justin Ling's CBC podcast is so much more than an investigation of the horrifying Bruce MacArthur murders, taking a riveting journey into the history of violence of Toronto's gay village. Everyone should be watching Tani Siracho's Vita, which only got better in its second season of unapologetically female, Latinx, and queer storytelling. Michael Venus's drag and wearable art extravaganza, Wiggle, turned 25 in Montreal this year, and it remains one of Canada's most vital queer art festivals. Speaking of Montreal, Xavier Dolan marked a decade of being Canada's cinematic golden boy by showing us a stripped down, softer side in his eighth film in just 10 years, Matthias and Maxime. There wasn't just one Canadian drag performer making waves on TV this year. Our very own Yavska slayed on the reality show Dragula, where he competed to become the world's first drag super monster. All right, let's end things off by celebrating the actors behind Euphoria's LGBTQ heroines, one of whom blessedly has a name that starts with a Z, Zendaya and Hunter Schaefer. All right, that's a wrap. Wishing you all a happy new queer. Bye.